Hi, it's Karen Lebo with VintageDazzle.Etsy.com here with another flea market haul. Yay! For once, I had a really good day. I mean, I bought a lot of jewelry. Not, not a whole lot of sterling silver, but a little bit of sterling silver and some other just interesting, fun, fun, you know, jewelry. And a little bit of glass, a little bit of cloisonne. Mostly jewelry, though, so yay! I'm just gonna... Uh, get started. I'm sorry if I'm a little wilted looking. I just got done playing pickleball and well, there's that. <laughs> so this is going to be in no particular order just as I pick the, these things up and um, I may not remember exactly what I paid for some of this stuff because it's been a couple days but, but I can get close. Uh, I'm going to start out with this wonderful, probably a 1930s era charm bracelet. And this has got some wonderful, movable charms. Um, this, uh, this is a little radio. You can see the style of the radio. And it has um, a little stone set in it. I don't know what the stone is, maybe an amethyst or something, but it kind of flickers in the light. And then this is a little, um, it's a little Bible verse in it. It opens, the, co the um, cover opens, and, okay, I probably can't get it open right now. But anyway, it opens, and it has a Bible verse inside. And then this is a church, which also has a stone set in it. So I just have to insert a little correction here. Uh, these charms that I thought had stones in them, those are actually tiny little lenses, and when you look inside those lenses, there are little um, photographs or pictures inside the charm. And these are called Stanhope charms, and they're very collectible. And I had no idea they even existed until I started researching them later. So, that's what's going on here. And then, wait, I just showed you that one. Okay, this one, oh, this is the best. It's a little roulette wheel, and it actually turns, and there's a little bead in there that moves around. Um, this is a sewing machine. And look at the style of the sewing machine. Isn't that cute? And it actually, if you turn this, the needle goes up and down. And, okay, wait. That's the Bible. What's this other thing? Oh, this other thing is another book. I just realized there's two little books. I don't know what this one is. I don't know. Hard to get them. Oh, oh, it's like a little box. It's a tiny little box. What has that got in it? Um, oh my gosh, it's got little tiny compartments. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but it's got these tiny little compartments. Oh my god, it's so cute. So cute. And then, okay, so this one is the Bible verse. Sorry. That one right there. It's the Bible verse. And... Okay, I think I showed... Oh, and then we have a Statue of Liberty. So, that's pretty cool. I paid 25 for that, which I think is a pretty good price because I, I have a feeling some of these charms by themselves might be pretty valuable. So, that's a very nice, nice bracelet. Uh, we have an enameled, articulated Chinese fishy pendant. These always do well, and I only paid $8 for this. Sometimes they're sterling silver, sometimes they're not just have to test them, which I haven't done, but I will, by the time I edit this video, I'll probably know more and I will um, fill in and give you some answers about whether that's sterling silver or not. Um, and I, I think I told you I paid eight dollars for that. Then we have a glitter lucite bug pin. This is very 1950s, I think. Maybe 60s, maybe 60s. Um, but just very cute. I love bug pins. And that was $10. We have another charm bracelet. And it's, um, seems to be southern states, like, um, North Carolina and Virginia, no, Georgia, and I don't know what else I, anyway, it's a bunch of southern states. And, um, I don't know if they're sterling silver or not because they are marked Japan, but they're not marked sterling. I know the bracelet itself is sterling. And then 
don't laugh at me. I, it's a Confederate flag, but when I was looking at this, you know, you're trying to get through things and look quickly. And in my mind, my mind turned this into the British flag, you know, the, um, what you call it. I didn't realize it was a Confederate flag <laughs> until I got home. So I probably will just take that charm off. And I may fill this in with some other travel charms if I have them. I may have some spares lying around. You know, you get them in lots of silver sometimes. And I don't really like selling them by themselves because you can't sell them for very much usually unless they're very special. But anyway, that was only 10. So that's good. Um, let's see, this is not exactly jewelry, but it's a belt. It's a concho belt, a copper, nice copper. Concho belt. And uh, that was ten dollars. Um, got this stunning sterling silver pill box. It's a really nice one. Just beautiful detail. The inside is gold. <laughs> but it's just really a nice one. And I paid I want to say 15 for that. And we have a Victorian bright cut gold tone locket. Probably Victorian. I, this doesn't feel like a reproduction to me. This feels real. Very clean on the inside. And I paid 10 for that. And we have a sterling silver bracelet with some pretty blue stones. I'm hoping maybe they'll be blue topaz. Wouldn't it be nice if there were some... Um, yeah, I've lost it. Never mind. Lost that thought. Uh, anyway, it's not very old, but for $10, a silver bracelet for $10 is just hard to turn down. And it's very pretty. Stones look very clear and good shape. Okay, we have this bracelet, which is just a fancy, probably mid-century, um, embellished, ornate little bangle bracelet. I don't think this one has any names on it. Um, oh wait, it does. It does have a name on it. Um, but can I read it? Ooh, that's tiny. Um, I can't read it right now. It looks like it has a leaf logo and something else. If I can figure it out by the time I edit the video, I will let you know what it is. But I thought it was pretty, and it was $5. And we have this very mid-century copper and uh, um, plastic, basically. A little choker necklace. But I like the copper. I bought a lot of copper today, or the other day. Um, you know, it's probably 1950s, 1960s. And that was also $5. Got a... <laughs> Oops, this is a... This is an anklet, like a belly dancer anklet. But I thought this one was pretty neat because it's got enamel on it. It's got little, little plates of enamel on it. And that was five dollars. I don't think it's silver. I'll test it. What does this say? Does this say something? Hmm. It says A1 or something. It says, looks like it says something in a language I cannot read. Don't know. Okay, let's see. What else we got? Told you there was a lot of jewelry. Um... So I got this little choker. This looks like something that may have come from like the Home Shopping Network or one of those. It just has that look about it. Tiny, tiny little rhinestones all the way around. It's very well made. It has this nice um, sliding clasp with the little locks on the, either side. Um, and there's one stone missing, but that will be easy to replace. I've got, I've got some that size. So, and that was five dollars. Oh, let's see, we got a few rings. Bought these from Alex. <laughs> My good buddy Alex. Um, I, I used to limit 
like, like I used to only pay $10 for silver rings, but I've had a hard time finding any for that price, so I've had to go up. So I paid $15 a piece for these, but they're kind of cool. This one is an old, old cloisonne ring with most of the enamel gone, but there was something about it that just appealed to me, even in this state. It just looks so cool. So that was 15 and I don't, I don't know if this has any writing on it or not. I don't think it does, but it's silver. He tests everything. He's never sold me anything that wasn't silver. Um, and this is a, an inlaid ring. It looks kind of Zuni-ish, but it's not marked. Um, but it's got some spiny oyster and malachite and lapis lazuli, mother of pearl, and I forget what that's kind of a pale purple stone. I forget what that one is. Maybe I'll remember by the time I edit the video. But I thought it was, you know, it's, it's very contemporary looking. But I thought it was pretty and nicely made. And that was 15. And then we have this one, which looks Native American-esque. I don't know what that stone is. It might be a venturine. But it's got, you know, the feather motif. That's a nice little little ring. Oh, and this has got some mysterious markings on it. Yes, it's that. I think it says 950 sterling, so that would be even better than sterling. And another little mark right here that's so tiny I can't read it. It was really, really tiny. Oh, I'll have to get my big, powerful magnifier and see if I can figure out what it says. And we have... This is a canateal spun silver pendant. And I'm pretty sure it's silver. It looks silver, it's not marked, but I think it is. And that, I think I paid five for that, but it may have been 10. I got a big bunch of jewelry and, you know, he took all the original prices and then he knocked a little bit off the total. So I don't know what exactly what I paid for each piece. Um, this is, a canateal butterfly. I just love these, even though I probably still have several in my shop. I can't stop buying them because they're so cute. It's got a little uh, C clasp on it. Oh, I think that's pretty old. And I don't think this one is marked either. They seldom are. Those old ones. And I think I paid probably 10 for him. Um, let's see. Let's is a puffy heart pendant. These are always popular, and I paid 15 for that, I'm pretty sure. And then, I don't really know what this is. Um, the lady who sold it to me said it was Italian, but it's not marked. Um, looks, looks 1950s-ish. And these little flowers, they're three-dimensional, like they're little porcelain flowers, I think. But it's kind of different. I've never really seen one quite like that. And I'm pretty sure I paid 10 for that. This is by one of my favorite makers, Catherine Popesco. And if you don't know her, she, she bought all these antique jewelry molds in Paris from some company that went broke. And she re remade them in the 80s. I think it was the 80s with enamel and rhinestones and so this one is very Edwardian looking. A lot of her things are Art Deco but this one's an older looking one and um, I just love it. I love her stuff and it usually sells pretty well. It's collectible. Um, I think I paid five for that. Now we have this awesome looking pendant that's got some kind of natural stone donut at the center and just this wild sunburst silver work. I don't know if it's real silver or not. Again, haven't tested it. Um, don't think there's any marks of any kind on it. No, I don't think it doesn't look silver. It's just cool looking though. And that was five dollars. Uh, let's see, this is a pretty, pretty silver ring. It looks very old. And I believe that was ten. I did not get that one from Alex got that somewhere else. And 
Yes, this one is marked 95. Ugh, that is nice work. I don't know if you can see it, but that's really pretty. I'll pay 10 for that all day. <laughs> this, this is not jewelry. This is a refrigerator magnet. I'm going to give it to my sister at Christmas because she and I kind of have this fondness for frogs. <laughs> okay, we have a very nice old carved cameo. It's not set, but um, it is a very nice one. And um, I've sold them unset before. That was 10. This is a little locket. That's what the inside looks like. I think this was five. Uh, just, it's costume, I guess. I, I didn't see any marks on it. And this. Oh, I forgot. I was going to put this on and wear it for the video, and I forgot if I can get it unhooked from itself. This is the cutest mesh choker with these little dangling coins on it. Wait, I think I put, I showed it backwards. Yep, I sure did. Here, there. It goes like this. Very adjustable. And that's what it looks like. The little coins. I got this from my YouTube watcher, Lori, who is selling at the flea market now. And she gave me a great deal on this. I only paid $10 for this wonderful necklace. It is signed. Um, it's got a little tag on it somewhere because I know we've pinned it. We saw it. Okay, there it is. It's this tiny little dangling tag and it has a name on it. Starger. S-T-A-R-G-E-R, -E New York. So this is probably um, 1950s or 1960s. I'm not familiar with Starger. It sounds a little bit like I've heard it before, but I don't know anything about it. So I've got to do some research on that. Um, let's see. We're, on, we're getting through the jewelry. We're almost done. I've got this wonderful brooch watch. I think... Um, I, I wound it a little bit and heard it ticking, so I don't know whether it keeps time or not. I'm going to have to do some testing on it, but it sure is in nice shape, and um, that's very, I'd say, 1960s on that. I remember my mom had a watch very similar to this, this kind of face, and that was, I think that was 10, and then this souvenir bracelet from Budapest with the beautiful porcelain plaques. There has different scenes of the city. That's just so pretty. And it's in beautiful, beautiful, beautiful condition. Hoping that my camera's focusing all this. I don't have any way of seeing what I'm shooting until afterwards. I believe I paid 15 for that. I may have paid 20 for that just because I loved it so much. It's so pretty. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's one more. One more piece. <laughs> this is fun. This is ginormous. Can you imagine wearing this? Wow. What an attention getter. It's huge. Big copper medallion. And it's got like a Roman centurion guy, I think. I think that's what that is. Let's see. A little closer. Mm, maybe it's a knight. Yeah, it's a knight. My, my mistake. Um, Maltese cross. Maybe it's the Knights of Malta or something like that. Anyway, that was 10. 10 on that. Um, okay, yeah, that, that is all of the jewelry. Uh, just a few other things that aren't jewelry. One of my favorite things that I bought was this Victorian sterling silver thimble case with a sterling silver thimble inside it. It's 
bright cut engraving. Really special little piece. Really nice. I believe I paid 20 for that. Yeesh. And we got a couple of paperweights. This one is signed by the artist. I don't, um, it's kind of hard to see, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to actually identify the artist because the writing is really messy. But it is signed. It's like, yeah, I don't know. But um, it's dirty. I gotta clean it, but I thought it was an interesting, unusual, opaque glass paperweight. Somebody said, or the guy who sold it to me said he thought it might be an end of day, but I wouldn't call that an end of day. It's got some imperfections in the top, but it's not like chips or anything. And I paid 10 for that. It would have been a little much. And this one is signed. Um, OBG 1989, which is Ornamental Blown Glass is the company. And this is just, it's so iridescent, iridescent, and it shows all different colors in the sun. So pretty. Yeah, and that one I paid, maybe I paid 10 for it. I think I paid 10 for it. And then we have a gorgeous cloisonne box. It looks kind of like a soap box, but I'm, I guess it's really... It's anything you want it to be. It can be a trinket box. But this is pretty old, I think. And it's in lovely condition. Look at that lid. Isn't that cool? And I did not pay 25 for this. I paid 10 for this, which I think was a good price. We've got this tiny little chubby vase which is hand-painted Gouda Pottery from Holland. 1990... No, that's not what that says. Maybe it is. I don't know if that's a date or not. It says Willie, A.K. Gouda Holland. Maybe that says 66. But anyway, I... I bought this because I know Gouda Pottery is collectible, but I don't know anything about it other than it's collectible. Um, this may be a junk piece or maybe something really good, but I only paid $5 for it. And when you can pay $5 for something that's hand-painted, that's okay. I also got this little jar or box. I guess it's a box that's lined in the middle. And it is made from carved golden obsidian. That's obsidian with this golden sheen to it. It's really beautiful. In the sun, it was just like dazzling. You probably cannot appreciate it in this light, but it has a little piece in the top. And I, I believe I did pay 10 for this just because I loved it. And lastly, we have this funky souvenir cup. And this dates to I believe it's 1906. Um, let me see. It says Lewis and Clark Exposition, 1905, Portland, Oregon. So there's this company called uh, A and C Feldenheimer, something like that. Anyway, they made these these molded. I don't know what they're made out of. Maybe lead, for all I know. Um, I've had a couple of these in the past. And I think there are people who collect them. Because it was like only a very specific time that they were made. Anyway, I paid five for that. And I think that is all. Thanks for sticking with me. And if you like any of this stuff, it is going to be in my shop. Or it already is in my shop. If it's already sold, I will let you know that also. Um, yeah, be sure and leave a comment, like the video, that helps me, and uh, visit my shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com, or I have a second shop that's my craft shop, supply shop, that's um, karenlebo.etsy.com. All these links are in the description below. So thanks a lot again. Have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Bye.